Hey, what's up guys? So today we're down here on Fort Lauderdale Beach at a parking garage with the DJI FPV. We're going to be reviewing this drone. We're going to be letting you guys know what I think about it. We're going to be letting you guys know if it's something that you should, you guys should still look at in 2024. Um, and we're just, we're just going to give you a, a overall overview of the drone. So we got the drone here. I got the DJI goggles too, and I got the DJI remote too. I got three battery packs and we're going to be, we're going to be getting this thing active for sure so let's let's get right into it all right so the dji fpv drone has a 4k 60 camera on a two axis gimbal so you don't have four axis only two axis so up and down kind of cool though on an fpv drone to be able to move the camera up and down while you're in motion so that's kind of cool it's got forward vision sensors and it's got lower vision sensors it also has this cool light on the bottom that when you're you're coming in and you're hovering and you get about this far away from the ground the light turns on and it illuminates the ground under it and it's it's kind of a cool little effect that the drone has um it has these propellers that have this locking system on them where you just push it turn it and then pull it out so they're very easy to to remove on and off you just push it down turn it and there's no issue and then they're color coded so the ones with the red circles around here you just put on the, the ones that's marked red red circle you just throw it on there so it's pretty hard to mismount these propellers it's pretty straightforward pretty simple um the drone has led lights on the back side that are customizable within the goggles so you can go in the goggles menu and you can change what colors these these lights are I think I have them set at multicolor and then they're set to like throttle so as I put the throttle up like the colors change and they they move rapidly um, but other than that I think that's that's about it for the drone there's a heat sink on the back side of it so the drone can sit idle with the battery on which is kind of a cool feature um, most normal FPV drones they would overheat if you had them plugged in sitting waiting for the shot so with this thing you can sit have the drone on, waiting, 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 and then right before you need to go out and get a shot, you can just put it up in the air, go get the shot, and then bring the drone back, land it, no problems. Um, but for the drone itself, I think that's about it. Let's get into the, the battery and the goggles. All right, so the FPV drone uses DJI's smart batteries. They last, depending on how you're flying, so if you're flying full acro, the drone's gonna get about 8 to 10 minute flight time, flying GPS moderately, not flying full speed, um, you're going to get about 15 to 20 minutes. I've, I've gotten all the way up to 20 minutes flying it very normally, like just getting like cool little cinematic shots on GPS mode. I've had no problems getting high flight times like that. Um, the drone in GPS mode maxes out at the fastest I've gone is like 63, 65, somewhere in there with the wind. Um, if you put it in full acro mode, it'll go 92 is the fastest I've ever seen someone go with one of these things. Maybe they go faster. I don't know, but 92 was the fastest I've seen, so it's pretty fast. Um, other than that, I think that's, that's about it for the drone. The battery slides in like so, and then you just, it's a TX90 plug at the top. You just plug that guy in, and then drones ready to go you throw her on the ground and there's no issues with that and then with the goggles the goggles are powered by one of dji's batteries it's kind of annoying it's not the best quality battery and it kind of dies fast but they make tx90 adapters that you can get and you can run a normal lipo battery on these goggles so i might i might get that um, I upgraded the strap on the goggles because the strap that it comes with, it wouldn't keep the goggles on my face. It's, it has the strap from the top and the sides. This one's more like a, like a normal goggle strap, so it, it fits me a little bit better. I also swapped out the foam because I have a pretty small face, and the stock foam let way too much light in from the sides, so I had to upgrade the foam. I also put a, um, a little wire holder on here that I 3D printed so that the cord doesn't come unplugged while I'm flying. I got a little short wire so that I don't have a whole bunch of excess wire hanging while I'm flying. So I just stick the battery in the side, do that, and there's no issues. 
Um, I have the stock DJI antennas on here. With this drone, you can only you can't put a patch antenna on these. It won't work because that that's only um, five gigahertz. Whereas this runs it's dual band. Whereas if the patch antennas are made for like normal FPV drones that run different frequencies. So the only thing you can do to upgrade range on this drone would be to upgrade the antennas, and that's kind of hit and miss. I mean, some people get good results with it. Some people don't. I don't know. I haven't really played with it yet. I might, I might not. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. Let me know what antennas I should, I should be looking at because I honestly don't really know. But for the goggles, um, that's about it. I don't have any of the, the retina upgrades on there. I mean, it's just the stocks. I don't have any of the, um, the blue light filters or anything on there. It's just the normal, um, the goggles are, are pretty good for what they are. Um, you can't use the new goggles on this drone. You can only use the goggles. I believe you could use the version 1 goggles and then the goggles V2, these ones. You can't use the new ones, the Avada goggles. They don't work with it for whatever reason. But these goggles I run with my Pavo and they run great. I also use the DJI controller with my Pavo. If I could get it out of here. Ah. I put these upgraded sticks on here and it doesn't fit in my case the best now. I gotta cut the case out. Uh, I got stuck again. Hang on, bear with me. We'll be back. Alright, finally got the remote out. Um, I put these upgraded sticks on here because when I'm flying normal FPVs, the stock sticks that come on it, actually I still have them in here. These guys. They're just a little bit too short. They they weren't doing it for me. They're sitting all the way down here, whereas my sticks are all the way up here, so they're a lot easier to pinch and use. Um, but other than that, the controller's pretty simple. It's a basic controller. You got your start stop for acro mode over here, record button. You have this switch over here that changes a couple different things, and then you have the mode switch over here. Top is normal mode, middle is sport mode, and then the bottom would be full manual mode, full acro mode. And then over here on the side is the pause button. So if you're ever doing something with the drone and you, you get caught up or you, you get disoriented in the air, you could just press the pause button and it'll level out and it'll find itself. Doesn't matter if you're in full acro mode, doesn't matter what you're doing, it'll level out. You could just tap that and let go and it'll the drone will be fine. Um, and then this is your camera slider. So for the equipment, I think that's about it. So we're going to head up to the top of this parking garage and we're going to fly this thing. I'll see you guys up there. So we're up here at the top of the parking garage now with the drone. I got everything turned on. The biggest thing with this drone now is with all the new remote ID laws in place, um, you always have to have the drone hooked up to a device because it needs to catch the remote ID off the phone, which is pretty annoying. But I guess there's, I guess that's what we got to do now. So you're going to power up the drone. I already have my goggles on. I already have my remote on and I have my phone on. So we're going to go on my phone. We're going to go on the DJI go out or DJI fly out. Wait for the drone to connect. As soon as we bind up, it'll show up. Oh, I don't have my goggles on. That's why. Oh, my goggles aren't even plugged in. I'm tweaking. All right, power up the goggles. And then right here on the app, this will show up. Yep, now my phone just started charging. Wait for the goggles to pair. Here we go, drones up, we hit go fly. Now you can view the camera from here, which is kind of cool, but in order to clear, so if I don't have that hooked up like that, 
on my goggles, it'll say remote ID uh, error in the bottom corner and it won't let me take off. So that's pretty annoying. But now that I have this hooked up and you can see the camera off the phone, I'm now clear to take off. So you see it says aircraft and enhanced warning zone, fly with caution. I can click through the messages and actually you can do a couple different things on here. But I'm just gonna set that right there because I have to have that in order to fly. And then we're gonna take off. So we'll just hop in the goggles, make sure I'm comfortable. I'm gonna start start recording for you guys. Make sure the drone's recording. And then to start the drone up, it's just like any other DJI drone, you're just gonna go, I'm gonna make sure I'm in normal mode. And then you're just gonna put the sticks in towards each other. And then, so say actually, cause I had a problem with this for a while. So say you arm the drone up like that and then you decide you don't wanna fly. How you turn it off is you just take the throttle stick and you just put the throttle stick down. And then you see the motors will turn off. There's no more, no more throttle on there. So I'm gonna arm it back up. We're just gonna take off. So just a little bit of power. Then the drone goes up and it just hovers. So there's that light I was telling you guys about and I have it in full GPS mode. So it flies around like, like any other DJI drone would. It just flies around no problem. You see that light just turned off because it just got far away. You hover it. We're over at the beach right now. So I'm gonna hop in the goggles. You see, if you take off in GPS mode, it just sits right there. So you see the lights up there, the drone's just chilling right there. So we're gonna send it up to a point where I know I'm not gonna hit anything. We'll watch these buildings and we'll send it out. So right now, I am flying, oh, I'm in normal mode, so that's why I'm flying so slow. So you see, but you could get some really slow cinematic shots in this normal mode like this. I'm capping out at about 22 miles an hour. You guys can see the parking garage that we're on, but normal mode's kind of whack. So we're gonna put it in sport mode and in sport mode, it disables the ox, uh, obstacle avoidance system. So you see immediately I'm picking up speed, doing 50 right now. Gotta be careful. Watch these buildings coming right over Fort Lauderdale Beach there. Looping back around, here's the parking garage that we're at. We'll do a quick little flyby. It's doing 60 miles an hour right now, flying right over top. The range on this thing, I've had it up out to two miles from my house, sitting in my backyard all the way to the beach, so I know that that's two miles. Um, so that's with a bunch of houses and a whole bunch of signal interference. I've yet to take it out in a place where there is no signal interference to figure out what the real range is, but allegedly it's around five miles which I believe because getting two miles with all the signal interferences I was, I was getting is pretty crazy. Let's try and fly this thing down the intercoastal a little bit. See, we got some sailboats down there. It's a cool drone though, because it's so fast and you can fly it so high. You can take it anywhere. Yeah, see, I'm a good at least a mile away from where I am right now. Actually, I'm starting to lose signal with the RC. Start bringing it back. The HD video quality is perfect. Actually, maybe if I turn, we'll get better. Actually, yeah. As soon as I turned and faced the drone, it got way better. So let's try and push it back out. I'm gonna insert some clips of this thing flying during the day so you guys can see what the camera is capable of. But now that I'm faced towards the drone, I'm definitely further than I was a second ago and I still have full RC, oh, I just lost one RC bar. And I lost one HD bar. 
think I'm gonna stop right there. So, I mean, I got a good distance away with all these interferences. I'm gonna fly at full speed back. I'm at 54% battery right now, so I've been flying it pretty fast and pretty aggressive in sport mode. Like, I'm, don't mind the Mustangs. The Mustangs are all over the place. They're a little out of control here. I'm getting high wind velocity warning. Ooh, it's very windy up there. Bring it down slowly, carefully. Keep bringing it back towards us. The power to weight ratio on this drone is really good though. It's pretty hard for this thing to have any issues. I actually did crash this drone one time though, but it was because I had the ludicrous propellers on it and the ludicrous propellers broke in high wind, kind of like I'm flying right now. I went into a turn going really fast and the ludicrous propeller snapped and caused me to crash, which is, had me pretty mad. But DJI was pretty good about fixing the drone, so can't complain about that. <coughs> We're just gonna bring it right back over to the car. And just land it right back where I took off. Auto landing. And there we go. So I landed it with 44% battery. So, I mean, I was flying it pretty hard and pretty aggressive and I got pretty good flight time. I was recording for six minutes. So I probably could have gone for another two minutes before I would have to bring it back and it would, it would be an issue. Um, but it's pretty good. Normal FPVs, especially with this size and that go this fast, are only getting like three to four, like on some crazy builds, maybe you'll see like five, six minutes, but you're not seeing anything much more than that on a, on a normal FPV. So it's kind of cool that the DJI FPV drone does that. As you guys see, we got the, the lights are on there. I have them programmed to change colors and they just kind of flutter. It's kind of cool, but to turn it on and off, you just double tap, drone turns off, we'll turn my goggles off, we'll turn the remote off. So in conclusion, um, DJI FPV drone is a good drone, but don't know that it's like, if you're looking to get into FPV, and you want a GPS drone, like a good drone, I honestly think you should look at the Avada. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's more forgiving to crashes and getting into FPV, you will crash. I, I built the, the Pavo 20 and I've been flying that thing around full acro mode and I'm still scared to put this thing in acro mode because I know that if I screw up even in the slightest bit, this thing hits the ground, it's, there's like, it needs to go back to DJI for service. Um, so I don't, it's just kind of annoying to deal with, whereas the Avada can take crashes a little bit better. Um, so you can learn with that a little bit easier. And then eventually you're gonna wanna get into building your own FPV drones. So, I mean, ideally just skip the DJI FPVs and build your own FPVs. But if you want that GPS safety net, I definitely look at the Avada. This is a cool drone to, I have a, a GoPro mount on this. It's a cool, or for it. Um, it's a cool drone if you wanna carry a GoPro around and you are a good FPV pilot and you, you want a drone that has GPS and return to home and all that cool stuff and can carry a GoPro reliably, this is a good drone, but if you crash it, you crashed it and it's gonna to need to be repaired. So that's, that's kind of the only thing with that. And the newest thing is that remote ID where anytime you're gonna fly the drone, you have to hook it up to your phone, which is pretty annoying. So, I mean, just definitely keep that in mind if this is a drone that you're looking into because not everyone wants to walk around with the goggles hooked up to their phone while they're flying this drone. But it's, it's definitely, it's a, cool, it's a cool little drone. I mean, to be able to get up there and cruise 60 miles an hour, 100 feet above this parking garage pretty reliably, I mean, it's cool, definitely cool. But I think that's gonna be it for today's video and we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.